Okay, we're back. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE.com, SiliconANGLE.TV, Inside Oracle Open World, 2011, San Francisco, California. You just saw the clip that I made with my social cam of Billy Bean, okay, signing books. You know, Billy Bean, the famous general manager of the Oakland A's, who perfected what is now become known as rotisserie or big data driven or data driven competitive advantage by using data to make the Oakland A's a competitive franchise from the seller to competitive. Obviously the movie Brad Pitt out in the theaters, great flick, great book. Michael Lewis wrote that book and it's really data, a great Dave, a great example of uh, big data. I'm here with Dave Vellante, no, no uh, stranger to big data. He's an expert in big data, runs an analyst for wikibon.org. Dave, Billy Bean, probably the best marketing angle of the Oracle Open World um, by NetApp. Brilliant, clever, and brilliant. Timing with the movie, great trend connect, as we say, <laughs> by NetApp. Um, and my big thing about it is, one, well, I'm a big sports fan, that Billy Bean, to me, highlights the future of our industry in that inside every company, no matter what size or what kind of company, there's a Billy Bean in there waiting to be unleashed. So to me, very competitive, uh, can marketing, Billy Bean signing books, Moneyball, great marketing angle by NetApp, and really shows the world, Dave, what NetApp, how they're thinking about it. I think it's clever, and uh, you know, it, it is. I mean, you, you and I have been talking about analytics all week, and what do you think I, about that? I, I agree. Uh, first of all, it was the best marketing I've seen in open world so far, and, and you know, despite Oracle's Exa mega, you know, jammed down your throat. Uh, the second thing, John, great job going over there with social cam. Um, you got Billy Bean. You made some commentary, and I, I think you also got some other guests, didn't you? Yeah. So my, I saw the CEO Tom George is there, and I really wanted to talk to him because I wanted to find out if this was really just a gimmick, a parlor trick, or really part of the philosophy of NetApp. So let, let's hear what Tom Georgian said. He's the CEO of NetApp. When I asked him about why Billy Bean was in the booth, obviously a brilliant move. Here's my conversation with Tom Georgians, the CEO of NetApp, a Cube CEO alumni who's NetApp, been in here in the Cube before. Uh, so uh, can we go to that Billy clip? Bean, Moneyball, Brad Pitt. And there he is. We have sound I on mean, that. I mean, Billy Bean, doesn't okay, he epitomize so big data? I mean, making his company competitive. And isn't there a Billy Bean in every company out there? Well, I think that's entirely the rationale that we're looking for here. I think that's the theme. Um, is that he basically, the story of his book is how we use data and use data in a unique way to actually identify who was going to succeed and who wasn't and allow them to build a team without spending as much money as the Yankees or the, or the big name teams. So for him, the idea of utilizing data to create competitive advantage is what we're trying to accomplish with big data. And he was just a baseball guy who knew his stuff, but he wasn't a real geek stat guy, but he used big data techniques, and that's really the power of analytics, isn't it, these days? Absolutely. I think um, knowing more about your, your business, whether it be about your players or about the opposition, and using that to your advantage is how he created advantage for the A's and built a very, very successful franchise. You guys have been great company, great successful Silicon Valley success story. Now recently going into Hadoop, looking at new ways of doing his unstructured data. That's the future of analytics. Uh, congratulations and great marketing, getting uh, Moneyball in there. It's good to see. Long right. line around the corner. People are really excited by that. Congratulations. Well, that's great. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they buy something. Yeah, and if you got time, come by the Cube. We're in, uh, around the corner. If you want to come by anytime, love to have you. It's yeah. great to catch up with you. Thanks. Fair enough. Good to I love Georgians. So, you know, you saw the smiling on his face. Obviously, he's really happy with Moneyball, um, a guy in this booth, Billy Bean, big data example. And, and the thing about that is, is that he talked about competitive advantage and uh, like I said, like I said, Dave, and, and I, you know, I guess I coined the term because I don't think anyone else said it, but there's a Billy Bean in every company. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's the power of analytics. And, and specifically, if you look at NetApp, the reason why I think this is a brilliant move by NetApp is they're getting their butt handed to them in the marketplace when it has come to the new emerging stuff like Hadoop. I've talked with Val at Storage Networking World. They recognize it. They've lost some accounts and some sales to the Hadoop movement and now have pivoted and expanded their product portfolio to actually go in aggressively in the unstructured market. They recognize that the CEO clearly says that they are um, going in that direction. And, and big data is about using data so anyone can change the, the face of their company in real time. An analyst, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a geek or a programmer or a DBA. Quite frankly, I think the DBA job title will go away. The analyst role becomes more critical. Well, I think, uh, as we've talked about many times, that data is the new source of competitive advantage, certainly in the technology business, but I think in all businesses. As we first heard on theCUBE from Abi Mehta when he was at B of A, it's game-changing. Um, talked about how they used to do sampling 
where you know, many companies did this, most all companies did this, they would take samples of statistics and analyze them. And, and Abi talked about taking the entire data set and, 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 and running that analysis and finding things that they didn't ever find before in near real time, taking it from you know, six weeks down to six minutes. So um, the Billy Bean example is fabulous, because especially for the Cube, because we love sports analogies. Yep. The Oakland A's have been an you know, extremely competitive team for a number of years. They've competed with teams like the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees with a payroll that's you know, one-tenth, and they've do done it with analytics, crunching all kinds of historical data and finding the value. They've, really popularized things like on-base percentage and all these you know, arcane statistics yeah. that people used to never pay attention to or didn't even know about. And the thing too, that he was looked at, and the movie plays this up more, more dramatically than the book, he was looked at as kind of a wild card, like what the hell is he thinking to do using this data? Why would he care about someone who draws more walks or you know, just on-base percentage, slugging percentage, pitching, all this stuff, all the stats which we now know we live in a fantasy uh, baseball, fantasy football, all these rotisserie, you know, uh, fun online sports are going on. This is the data world. And, and, and the point is, companies today might look at someone saying, hey, what are you thinking? Why are you going this, this route? And that's what analytics does, and we are seeing Hadoop and analytics, and obviously Oracle's pumping up Exa Analytics, which is the big story here, and that is truly going to be the game changer. SAP recognized it at Sapphire, and it's just total game changer. Well, it's really fun to watch. One of my favorite uh, Moneyball stories from the book was the, the A's had, had Jason Giambi, um, and, um, and, and Giambi was you know, huge, right? I mean, very, very, you know, effective player, MVP, um, and what happens is they can't afford to keep him, so he goes to the Yankees, of course, paying him a ton of money, and everybody said, oh, well, the A's are screwed. Now they're going to just go downhill. Well, what happened is the next year they were even more competitive, and they replaced them with, you know, a, 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 you know some basically some no-name first baseman who was tremendous. Euclid. Right? No, it wasn't Euclid. It was a guy who used to play for the Red Sox, um, journeyman. But anyway, I'll think of it. Um, and, and the A's became even more competitive, and there are dozens and dozens of examples like that where by using data, they found untapped value. And like you said, every organization has a Billy Bean. Well, I think sports is a great analogy, and uh, you know, Dave, we follow the, the industry here. We used a horse metaphor, uh, horses around the track, the triple crown with Intel in our last segment around data center. Um, who are the main horses do you see in this marketplace? And when, when I say marketplace, I mean the industry, not just the Oracle and the storage cloud, but like, let's expand the, the focus to all vendors, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Oracle, HP, IBM, you name it, up and down. Who are the big horses? What are the, what are the big races that are being run? Well, I do think the, the, probably the most significant trend that we've seen in a long time is the consumerization of IT, John. You've talked about it a lot. Um, I've called it the Google effect. So I just don't think you can have an answer to that question without starting with the big disruptors. It's Google, uh, it's Facebook, uh, it's, it's Zynga. Um, it's those companies that are doing a lot of the things that we talked about in the high performance data segment, um, doing all those scale out, those new applications, those big data applications. That's where all the innovation is, that's where a lot of the, the action is. And fundamentally, they're driving simplicity into the traditional data center. The, the data center, the enterprise guys that we follow, John, are, are following those companies, right? They're way, way behind in terms of that innovation. Now, they've got this legacy install base to deal with, but companies like IBM and EMC and VMware and Microsoft and Intel and Cisco, you know, they've got um, a, 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 a major challenge in front of them is how do they maintain their margins? How do they move their customer base from where they are today to this new world? How do they do so and compete in this new cloud area, well the, well, the way they do it is they use their cash hoards, they buy companies where they, they have white space, and they're frankly, they're smarter than their predecessors. And what do I mean by that? Um, guys like Bill Gates and Andy Grove killed Digital, Prime, Wang, DG, Apollo. These were once great companies. You know, arguably as great as you know, some of the companies, Sun Microsystems, as some of the companies that we're talking about today. These new leaders have seen it before. And they are, look at Michael Dell, the way he's completely transformed his company. I think their legacies are going to be defined by the degree to which their companies can survive these waves of transition. 
So Dave, let's let's just kind of bring it together here. Big data is obviously the, one of the top stories, if not the top story here at Oracle Open World, San Francisco, California with the Cube, and, and they're shutting the streets down. I mean, just tell the folks out there the kind of scene that we're experiencing here, starting with Sunday night, the keynote, up through right now. What's it like, how massive, what's the vibe, and what's the key things being discussed? Well, you come into Oracle Open World, and um, it's somewhat suffocating, I have to say. Uh, having been here, this is my, my second year in a row, but having been here for other events like VMworld, which is very open and, and, and it's big and it's, and it's exciting, but Oracle Open World is huge. Howard Street is blocked off. You try to take a cab over here, they don't let you park in front of Moscone. They send you around the corner, no, no, only buses, no. You know, they're yelling at the cab drivers and you got to walk almost as far as you would have had to from the hotel. So, you know, it's a very, you know, different environment, very controlled environment. And that theme carries through the entire show, I it's have to say. It's a culture of Oracle, theme controlled, angry, <laughs> you know, people pissed off all the time. No, no, seriously. Um, they don't mess around, you know, um, we, we've, we've talked a number of times. Let's talk about the content. I mean, let's talk about Oracle's uh, core announcements. Obviously, speeds and feeds with their performance, Exadata, their core product, that's a horse that they're riding, isn't it? I think if you're a customer of Oracle, th this content resonates really well with you. Hey, I'm a DBA, I'm a, I'm a control freak because if I lose the data, I lose my job, my company you know, gets screwed. You're so a control I'm, freak or the DBA's I'm, I'm a control freak? Well, I'm a control freak too, as <laughs> you know. But, uh, but I'm very much, I guess, like a DBA. I want to do the backup myself, yeah. I want to control things, and I want to make sure that you know, I'm protecting my company and protecting you know, my, my area because that's ultimately But we heard from David Flynn who's competing in an environment where there's scale issues. You got Facebook, you got Apple, you got Google, these companies all buying Fusion IO and they're not under one vendor. No, and I think that's the other point that we heard, a big theme that we heard, um, is that in outside of that Oracle DBA, there's a big world of heterogeneity. Uh, I don't know any shop that I walk into that's an all X shop where X is the vendor. There might be one or two out there, but it's very rare. So you live in a sea of heterogeneity, and, um, and that's, I think, frankly, Oracle's Achilles heel. I think that um, that's the, you know, the Oracle's just walking away from you know, a, a large market saying, hey, we only want to sell Oracle, that's the, that's the IP we want to go after. Well, at some point, um, you're going you're gonna to close ranks and box yourself in. And I don't know what that point is, it might be a decade from now. Well, we said last year that Oracle's a utility company. They provide a lot of running water inside these companies and not necessarily is the core technology provider for a lot of these big companies who have multi-vendor environments. And that seems to be more of the trend, less of the trend. But yet Oracle is promoting the buy it here, we are vertically integrated. Well, but the one thing I am impressed about, I'm impressed about a lot of things about Oracle, but they do spend money on R&D. Um, we heard Sam, Sam Palmasano last year say, I don't worry about, worry about HP, they don't spend on R&D, I worry about Oracle. And um, he's smart to worry about Oracle because Oracle does spend on R&D, they don't just make vapor announcements. I mean, they, they might pre-announce to freeze the market, uh, but they deliver. And they deliver because they spend money on R&D. Ellison loves technology. He's a geek at heart. So I'm on Yahoo News and I typed in Oracle Open World and Yahoo.com because uh, Yahoo has a great search engine, mainly because we are in the index for <laughs> Yahoo News. Um, Google has not yet indexed us, but Mark and I work on that. So Google, Google people better get their, get their act together. Anyway, I typed in Oracle Open World, Dave, to just into Yahoo to get a feel for the, some of the news. Um, Silicon Angle's up there um, leading the effort. But, but mainly, um, it's about exadata, okay? It's about um, uh, the, the shutzpah of the big data. It's about the land grab of Oracle. Do you find that consistent with the industry, the press? Um, consistent in terms of uh, people recognizing that? Yes, I think that um, people get Oracle. I mean, it's taken them a couple years, right? Everybody was sort of questioning the Sun acquisition. What's Oracle doing? They're going to spin off Sun. They're going to keep Java. You know, Ellison has made it very, very clear. They want to get out of the commodity x86 business. They want to sell their own IP, period. They basically want to own the footprint and drive margins. They've stated, Safra Katz has stated, she wants to get operating margins back to 42%. That's pre-Sun acquisition margins, operating margins. If Oracle does that, and by the way, I think it will, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal accomplishment in a two to two and a half year period. Tremendous. I mean, Think about that for a second. That says that they took a company that was trading at about 70 cents on the revenue dollar 
and transition that successfully to a company they've already done, they've already succeeded in my mind, but to a company that gets four times revenue from a market value standpoint. That's driving tremendous value for your shareholders and that's frankly what Oracle's all about. Um, obviously the big message here in Oracle is the hardware talk. I mean, they're all talking about hardware. I mean, it's a software company. Oracle is a software company. So why the hardware focus, Dave? Well, I think it's a big opportunity for Oracle. They really never competed in the hardware market before and now they do and it's a, it's a good margin business. You know, you see companies like like, like EMC and IBM sell a lot of hardware and make a lot of money, and Oracle is really smart. Oracle said, you know what, we don't want to be in the commodity hardware business, we want to be in the high value, mar uh, mar high margin business. How are we going to do that? We are going to integrate the hardware and software together, engineer it together, market the crap out of it, and execute, and keep investing, and, and stay up with the competition, and they've done that. Mm -hmm. So as we reported yesterday, Mark Hurd gave a keynote, and uh, you know his big conversation, because he's the one who has to execute, and in the Larry Ellison keynote, he actually uh, pointed down on Mark and said, Mark has to make the sales happen. So Mark Hurd's main, um, main point was collaborations front and center, and basically they're going cloud and on-premise. It's very much an SAP war between Mark Hurd and uh, Oracle, and um, they want to have more flexibility in their offerings. That's a key focus for Oracle. And then they're seeing a whole bunch of competition, and they recognize that. So those are the core things we heard from Mark Hurd. Um, obviously, they're trying to play the collaboration and analytics message um, on, on cloud and on demand and on premise, and obviously the competition. So, you know, I think I think Hurd has to execute this machinery and ultimately drive sales for Oracle. Well, as we've talked about here, um, Oracle, Ellison in particular, for years talked about his competitors writing checks, not code, and then he did the flip. And he really flip-flopped on that smartly and went out and, and bought, I mean, Oracle was basically getting its butt kicked in applications yeah. by companies like PeopleSoft. What they do, they go and buy companies like PeopleSoft. Well, they're, bu they're buying technology, you said in intellectual property, they're going to buy what they need, um, so that's key. And so, we, we so PeopleSoft and Siebel and, and All right, and so Hyperion. we're looking at, we're looking at the picture you're looking at right now is Mark Hurd, and basically, um, you know, he's, he's really, the newer cloud offerings, um, they ha he claims is not as strong as Oracle. So that's obviously the big thing, it's a sales focus. And he claims what? The, new, new the, old, the new cloud offerings, the cloud-based offerings, have older code bases than their on-demand business line. Ah. So that's one thing. Um, this is the, his, he's talking about the competition. Um, and he's saying the scale of operations um, is really, really, really big for Oracle. That's a big advantage. Um, other competitors don't have that vertical speci specialty Oracle's got, um, and Oracle's got the mature code base. So for them, that's a big thing. The Exa branding was a big part of his conversation. Exa data, Exa logic, Exa analytics, Exa which is analytics. Um, that's their core. They are going to propose to offer all kinds of flexibility with one code base to all their customers. That's their number one fundamental thing that Oracle wants to do. That's their value proposition. That's their shtick. One code base of across Exadata, Exalogic, and now Exalytics. I, you know, I, I was in the keynote yesterday. I was not impressed with, with Hurd's keynote. He really didn't say anything. He just sort of introduced people. And maybe that was you know, the agreed upon approach. I would have liked to have heard more from Mark Hurd and, and Safra. Um, but, you know, again, they're putting forth whom they put forth. Uh, we're going to hear from Larry tomorrow. It's always, I think, entertaining. Ray Wang says we're going to get more of the same. Exa, boring, marketing, puke. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, Larry takes, I'm expecting, Larry's going to take off the gloves and, and like he did last year, talk about, you know, some of the competition. Yeah, so to Larry's keynote tomorrow afternoon will be really the fun one to watch. We'll be carrying that live here on SiliconAngle.tv, so stay tuned. And uh, Mark, I think we do have some clips. Do we have clips of uh, Michael Dell? Yeah, let's go to a two minute highlight of Michael Dell and then Dave and I will come back and wrap up day two. Day two at Oracle Open World, San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and I'm here with Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org and let's take a look at Michael Dell and we'll be right back. 
tools from Solaris 10. You know, right, Dell Solaris has 11. changed a lot how, how during the past what's the nine years, and our you know, industry it, certainly changed a lot, too. Text, you know, text think about what's happening with mobile somewhat equivalent. and cloud um, you know, there, there's and social computing. There's some differences in the details and, and how well, they One of the things that hasn't where, changed is what we care about. Know, instead of having a lot and of that is selection we're in the software of productivity. right up front, we have this philosophical The stuff of where IT happens and how it happens and how we interact with it right away is changing pretty dramatically. With the interactive installers. Cloud installs is really enabling fast. an even you know, bigger five, change. Five minutes. And that is that right. the line that between business and, and IT is simply disappearing. Running, mm -hmm. And then do, do Dell the is not a PC company. That's what you're doing the, Dell the is an end-to-end -end so solutions you to have company start, that understands that the endpoint is, no, no, is a no, huge so, part so of the solution. Servers are part, storage are part, networking is part, security, services, a client, are it's all got, integral know, much, parts much of the solution. Set of capabilities built. Wherever information is delivered, wherever data is mined, insights are derived, value is created. It happens at the nexus between human and machine. That is where computing really is. That's where the magic is. The more embedded technology becomes, the more value it delivers to our customers. And I'm immensely proud of the change that Dell is driving and staying ahead of the pack around these new opportunities. Yes, technology is changing, but how we use it to create value is changing even more. And Dell is absolutely right at the center of that evolution driving it forward. And it's that drive that we believe is what will help you and your organizations realize your potential. And that is what the new Dell is all about.